Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley with Haley Stitches and today I'm gonna show you how to make a classic Irish chain quilt. The fun thing about this pattern is that it uses two and a half inch pre-cut strips and strip piecing so it comes together super quickly. You can download a copy of the free pattern in the description of this video. So come with me and let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is cut our background fabric and before I start cutting my background fabric I always square up the edge to get a nice 90 degree angle to work with. The first set of background pieces we're cutting are our six and a half inch squares and my ruler is only six inches wide so in order to get six and a half inch strips I'm going to use the lines on my cutting mat in addition to my ruler to help me get the right size if you're going to use this method it's important that the lines on your ruler match the lines on your mat otherwise your cutting will not be accurate I'm going to cut a total of six six and a half inch strips you'll also need a total of eight two and a half inch strips for the background but I'm going to substitute that for a jelly roll just to make things quick for me to piece this together. Now we're going to subcut these strips into six and a half inch squares and I am going to be using a six and a half inch square ruler just because I have it but you can continue to use the lines on your mat or a different size ruler to help you get the correct measurement. First trim off the selvage and then we're going to cut six and a half inch squares from this strip. Our fabric is doubled over so we'll get a total of six six and a half inch squares from each six and a half inch strip. Now I'm cutting the rest of the six and a half inch strips down into six and a half inch squares squares and I'm going to stack all the strips on top of each other to do this just to make it a little bit quicker and I definitely recommend changing your rotary blade before you do this because cutting through all of these layers can be challenging when you have a dull rotary blade. You'll need a total of 31 six and a half inch squares for the small throw version of this pattern and I'm going to cut the rest of the background fabric from this jelly roll. I'm going to give you a few of my favorite jelly roll tips before we break into this. The first is leave the packaging on until you're ready to use it because they're so messy and so linty. And the second is to use your lint roller on both sides before you break it open. This is definitely going to decrease the amount of lint on your jelly roll and I'm just going to do this on both of these because I'm going to be using a colorful jelly roll and a white background jelly roll as well. So for the fabric A or the jelly roll strips, I'm going to choose 10 strips out of my jelly roll. I am going to choose two of each color because there's five colors and I want my Irish chain quilt to give a nice scrappy look. And I'm going to grab eight strips from this jelly roll for the background fabric, but you can definitely cut it from the background fabric and the pattern is written to help you do so. You'll need a total of 10 fabric A jelly roll strips and eight fabric B or background strips. Now I do want to show you one thing about working with jelly roll strips and pre-cuts in general. Both of these strips are marketed as two and a half inch pre-cut strips, but as you can see, the white strip is actually a little bit bigger than the colorful one in front of it. You can see it peeking out. That's because one manufacturer measures from the top of the pinked edge on the side and the other measures from the valley. So keep that in mind as you're mixing and matching from different manufacturers or pulling strips from your fabric stash. Now it's time to start piecing our nine patch blocks together. So to do this, we are going to line up three jelly roll strips, a color, a background, and a color and we are going to sew these together. This combination of fabrics is called strip set A and we'll press this down. This method of piecing is called strip piecing and it's a super quick way to make a nine patch block and I'll show you the magic in just a minute. Now we're going to make our strip set B, so that's gonna be a background, a color, and a background and we'll do the exact same. We'll sew all of these strips together and then for pressing, we are going to actually press up for this one. And that's going to help our seams nest nice and close. You'll need a total of four strip set A pieces and two strip set B pieces. Now we're going to subcut all of these strips. The first step is to trim off the selvage and then we are going to subcut this strip into 16 two and a half inch smaller strips. You can see how this is so much faster than cutting all of your fabric into small two and a half inch squares and piecing them all together. That would take a lot longer than using this strip piecing method. About halfway through this strip, I do decide to square things up again. As you're cutting this many tiny pieces, it is super easy to get things off grain again. So I just squared it up and then continued cutting my 16 strips. The nice thing about this pattern is that all of your strips, your strip set A's and your strip set B's are going to be cut this exact same way so you can stack them on top of each other if you feel comfortable to make the cutting go a little bit quicker so here you can see you get 16 two and a half inch strips from strip set a and from strip set B and now it's time to finally piece our nine patch blocks together so we're gonna take one strip set a one strip set B and one strip set a we'll sandwich the strip set B in the middle 
and that is going to create our nine patch cross effect. The great thing about this pattern is that all of these pieces are going to nest together because when we were piecing these strips together, the strips at A were pressed down, the strips at B were pressed up. So that's going to create a nice nesting effect. And I'll show you what that looks like right here. You can see either of these seams are pressed in the opposite direction and that just makes them bump up really nicely next to each other to give a nice 90 degree angle as you're piecing these nine patch blocks together. That's really going to help the effect of the overall quilt. So this is what the final pieced nine patch block looks like and I'm going to press these seams open just to get a really nice flat look on my block. All of the seams can be pretty bulky so I find that pressing these final seams open helps keep things lay super flat. I want my blocks to look super scrappy so I don't mind if there's two of the similar pattern next to each other or if they're upside down. But if you do care you want to pay attention as you're piecing these blocks together. Now that our blocks are pieced, we'll need a total of 32 nine patch blocks and 31 six and a half inch background squares. Now it's time to piece our rows together. So this row is row A, and we're gonna alternate our nine patch with our background six and a half inch squares to get a total of seven blocks across. And to piece these together, I'm just gonna take one nine patch and one background and sew them together one at a time, and then I'll add the nine patch on. This quilt is great for chain piecing if you want to do all of the rows together at the same time. It makes it super easy, especially if you're looking for a scrappy look. And keep in mind that you can rotate these blocks around to get a nice distribution of color and to change it up a bit so all the blocks aren't the exact same orientation and colors. And this is what the final pieced row A will look like. And I'm gonna press all of my row A strips to the right to help us get that nesting effect again when we piece the entire quilt top. This is the layout for row B. So this one starts with the background square and then goes to the nine patch. So it's the same as before, just alternated. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So two at a time and then add another one. And really that's just because I'm filming and it's a lot easier for me to do one at a time. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that if you prefer to go that way too. So this is what the finished row B will look like and we'll press all of the row Bs to the left. To make the small throw version of this quilt, you'll need five row A's and four row B's. Now it's time to piece our rows together. So as you can see, when you lay a row A and row B next to each other, it gets that nice crisscross effect that's gonna give us that classic Irish chain. And because we pressed everything in opposite directions, everything is gonna nest perfectly to give us those great 90 degree crisp angles. You can press the seams in whatever direction as you sew all of these rows together, but you'll just continue to sew the rows in an A, B pattern until you finish the entire quilt top. And this is what the finished quilt top looks like. So you can see it gives that great chain effect. This is a super classic quilt pattern and I absolutely love it. It's a classic for a reason. And this is a great way to use up any jelly rolls that you have laying around. Don't forget to grab the free pattern and I'll see you next time.